Hey, what's up, students? Hey, it's so glad to see everyone. Y'all, we are excited just to hop into the Word today and even close out the series that we've just been walking through. Um, and in this series, we've been talking a lot about sexual integrity, all right? And as we wrap up this series, we're going to talk about one thing and one thing only, and that is boundaries, all right? Now, I know when you hear that word boundaries, you probably are thinking, hey, I don't, I don't know if a boundary is a good thing. Like, why would boundaries be something that I would enjoy or something that I would even want to have? Have in my life because I know for most of us we're thinking a boundary is limiting us when we ultimately want freedom but think about it like this what if we all were driving right we were on the road and there was no traffic lights there were no lanes there were no markings it would probably be a lot of chaos right it would probably be a lot of wrecks that were happening because there's no boundary lines that are in place right or think about maybe sports, right? Think about maybe volleyball or basketball or football where there's boundary lines, there's sidelines, there's markers just to ensure that the field of play can, can operate and that sport can operate the way that it was intended to because it has boundaries. And, and we might be thinking, hey, with these boundaries that you might see in the world or might see on the street or even in sports, that these boundaries are actually good things because it, they are in place for a reason. They're in place for us to operate in the way in which that we are supposed to operate in. But now let's talk about boundaries just when it comes to sexual integrity and even what God might even say when it comes to boundaries. Now let's be real for a second. I know when you hear that word boundaries, you might be thinking, man, I, I, don't, I don't really want to have any boundaries in my life. You know, I'm, I'm a student right now. I, I want to have as much freedom as I possibly can. I don't want anyone to, to limit me or, or put me in a box by any stretch of the imagination. Why would I want to have a boundary in my life? Or why would God even say that it's good for us to have a boundary just when it comes to this idea of sex? So let's talk about that today of why it's important for us to have boundaries just to ensure that we can live in the way that God has intended us to live. But even ultimately, that when it comes to this idea of sex and what sex is and how God even created sex, that the best way for sex to be lived out is in boundaries. All right. So let's just talk about and just see what, what God just says about boundaries just when it comes to sex. So right here in 1 Corinthians verse 6 or chapter 6, verses 18 and 20, this is what God says. All right. And Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. And in the Corinthian church, this church, they were almost kind of like what the world is today. Like there was there was a lot of immorality going on um, just in Corinth, very similar to what's happening in the world today. And Paul says, hey, I, I really want to give you some clear instructions when it comes to sexual integrity. So Paul says this, he says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you've received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And so what Paul is saying simply right here is that first word right then and there. He says to flee from sexual immorality. So Paul is saying that, hey, when, when there's ever a point in time where one might feel tempted, where one might feel like going over the boundary, Paul says, I need you to flee. I want you to come up to that boundary, but I don't want you to step over. I want you to flee from it to ensure that you are maintaining your sexual integrity. So Paul is saying that, hey, the boundaries that we have in place, hey, they're for our good because we don't want to step over them. But we want to have them in place so that when we ever feel ourselves wanting to step over that boundary and maybe fall into some sexual immorality that we can flee from it because we have that boundary in place. Now, let's just simply just define what a boundary is, just ensure that we just have some clarity just on, hey, this boundary that, that, that God's talking about, that we should have, that he has created for our good, let's be sure we can see this boundary in the right light. Let's not see this boundary as, as a bad thing that is limiting our freedom, but let's see this boundary in the way that God has intended for us to live. So we might think when it comes to boundaries, that boundary is just meant to keep something out, 
We might think that the boundary is something that is just in place to keep something in. We might think uh, that the boundary does not have any gaps in it at all. We might think a boundary is, it can be seen from far away. But truly, the boundaries that God has said in his word for how we should maintain our sexual integrity and just for the context of sex, ultimately, they're for our good. If you want to think about like this, think about if we all had ultimate freedom. That if we all wanted to do what we wanted to do, when we wanted to do it, no matter what time we wanted to do it, because we all have ultimate freedom. We might think that that's the best thing for us because I can do what I want, when I want, no matter what's going on. But if every single person had ultimate freedom in this world, it wouldn't be an amazing thing to live in because there would be so much chaos happening because everybody has their own level of freedom with no boundaries. But true freedom is actually lived out in boundaries. And the boundaries that God has placed in his word when it comes to sex, they're actually meant for our good. That it's, it's something that is good, that the boundaries are good. And how God even created and intended for sex, it's even for our good. Think about Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, this is, this is who Paul, or not Paul, but this is who God created in the garden. God created Adam. God uh, formed Eve out of Adam. And, and, and the main goal for these two were to live in boundaries, but to also have intimacy with each other. And as they were having intimacy with each other in the boundary of the garden, and God even, even gave them some clear direction and a clear boundary, hey, do not eat from this tree. That's a boundary. They had an amazing time together. They had intimacy together. It even says that they felt no shame because they were living out the freedom that God gave them in the context of the boundaries that God had put in place. But then something happened. And we all know the story about what happened with Adam and Eve. We know that there was a serpent that tempted Eve and Eve ate the apple and gave that apple to Adam. And then that's when they now realized that they were naked and they now felt shame. See, originally when they were living out their freedom and obeying what God had said in his word when it comes to the boundary that he placed for them, they didn't feel any shame because they were living out how God created them to live, how God even created sex. They were living that out in the context of the boundaries that God had created. But as soon as they said, hey, you know what? I, I want to go over that boundary. You know, I'm, I'm going to eat of that apple. And once they stepped over that boundary, that's when they now realized that, that they were naked they now realize that, that, that they can now see each other differently. They now felt the incredible weight of shame because of that, so much so to where they hid from God because of the shame that they felt. Now, students, I know this, this might be even real. This might be even personal for maybe some of us to where maybe there's been a point in time in our lives where we've, 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 we've stepped over a boundary. I can know even for myself when I was in high school as well, when there was boundaries that might have been in place and I felt the urge to step over them. And I even did. And I felt the incredible amount of shame knowing that I stepped over a boundary. And, and that's happened to Adam and Eve. They felt that shame. They, they felt ashamed of what they just did and they hid from God. They ran away from them because they thought God was going to condemn them. And we might feel that way too. Maybe there's some of you that, that, that stepped over a boundary. And, and maybe there might be some of us that, even though we felt tempted before, that, hey, we know that we shouldn't do this thing, but you still went over the boundary. And maybe there might be some of us that, that are listening here today, and you still feel the shame of what happened because you stepped over that boundary. And I just want to just encourage you just, just today, just to know that God did not even condemn Adam and Eve when, he stepped over that bound, when they stepped over that boundary. Do they feel some consequences of that decision? Absolutely. But God in his love still pursued them, still covered them, and still said, hey, you know what? I still have a purpose for your life. I'm still going to use your life, even though that you stepped over this boundary. So students, I just want to encourage you today that when it comes to God's design for sex, simply sex and, and God's design, sex is a good thing. But it's best lived out in the boundaries that God has created for us in his word.
And so it's helpful for us to understand that everything that God says in his word and even the boundaries that he has in place for us, they're not meant to limit us. They're not meant to to take away our freedom, but the boundaries that God has set in his word for us, they're meant for our good. That we can truly live out who we are created to be and truly live out how sex is supposed to be when we're doing it in the context of God's boundaries that he has in his word. So you might be thinking, okay, I I know that's good. I know that that I need to have some boundaries in place. I, I see boundaries as a good thing now, and I even see sex as a good thing. But how can I develop the right boundaries? How can I, as someone that's a student, that's even in high school right now, where there might be a lot of temptations that you might be facing, how can I develop the right boundaries? I would just say, it's just to pre-decide what you're not going to do. Pre-decide what you're not going to do. Set the boundaries in place now, whether it might be how you spend time with the opposite sex, whether it might be what your communication might be with the opposite sex, you know, where you go. Pre-decide the boundaries that you are going to place now. Because when you pre-decide what your boundaries are and you know that these boundaries are rooted in God's word, then when that temptation comes up, it will come up against that boundary. And you will not want to cross over that boundary because you've already put it in place. But when that boundary is not in place beforehand, you are more inclined to cross over it because you didn't even know what the boundary was. So pre-decide, students, what are your boundaries? What are you going to say no to? And then also share that with someone so someone can hold you accountable to the boundaries that you put in place. And even also, as you are around each other, maybe even in school, hey, it might also even be helpful to ask someone, hey, what are your boundaries? just so that I can honor your boundaries and you can honor my boundaries as well. In order for us just to be the man and the woman that God has created us to be, even when we're students right now in high school, because I know we all have probably been exposed to a lot of things already. I know the temptation might be high from what you're hearing from your friends or what you're seeing on social media. I understand that you might be seeing all of it and you feel the weight of it and you might already even feel some shame. But I want you all to know that everything that God says in his word, when it comes to sex, when it comes to how we act relationally with each other, all the boundaries that he has in place, they are not meant to limit us in any way. They are not boundaries that are meant to harm us in any way or take away our freedom. But the boundaries that God says in his word, they're simply for our good. Everything that God says in his word, it's for our good. And we can trust that because we know that God is the one that created us. God is the one that loves us. And everything that he says for us and how we should even act is simply for our good. So students, as we've been walking through the past couple of weeks and talking about sexual integrity, even sex in this culture and what that means from technology and everything that you might be facing with right now, I want you to know, that boundaries are simply for your good. Without boundaries, it would be so hard for us just to be the man and the woman that God has created us to be. But with the boundaries that God has put in place from his word, we can truly live out how God created each and every one of us to live. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much, God, for God giving us boundaries in your word. God, knowing that we can truly live out our freedom and how you have created us to live with your boundaries. So God, would you help us all to, one, know what your boundaries are and what you say in your word, but then to also create healthy boundaries so that we can live out how you have created us to live. So God, we love you and we thank you. And it's in your son's name that we do pray. Amen.